Each chakra is a specific expression of prana, otherwise known as life force energy. Each one looks a bit like a vortice or else like funnels of energy. Now, we are mostly aware as people in the modern world, especially the Western world, we're mostly aware of only seven chakras. And those are the seven that apply to only one of so many, I mean so many chakra systems that have been created in the world. The one that you most likely know is the seven chakra system. That is root chakra, sacral chakra, solar plexus chakra, heart chakra, throat chakra, third eye chakra, crown chakra. End of story, right? But what if I told you that there are actually hundreds of chakras? I mean hundreds related to the body and hundreds that aren't even directly related to the body. Now today we're going to talk about one of them. When it comes to different chakra systems, not everybody actually agrees on the numbering of the chakras. I mean, some chakra systems regard the heart chakra as the first chakra. As you know, the typical energy chakra um, system that you use considers the root chakra to be the first chakra. For this reason, I'm not going to number the chakra that I'm going to talk to you about, but I am going to use the word that's most commonly used to refer to it, and that's the soul star chakra. If I had my way, this would definitely not be the way it was called, but today we're going to be talking about your soul star chakra. The soul star chakra is located above your head. Now, even though there's some variability in where it is located to one person's head versus another, in most people it's about six inches above your head, like half a foot or so. This chakra is like a gateway or a link between the singular temporal embodiment and the united eternal non-physical. It is the link between the two points of perspective that are you. It is the gateway between association and dissociation, identification and non-identification. This is the real reason why people think that this chakra is kind of like a portal to you figuring out your past lives in the Akashic Record. In reality, this chakra really is unconcerned with any of that. What it is concerned with is the why you incarnated into this particular embodiment in this lifetime. It holds the truth of how your individual consciousness and your temporary life fits into the bigger picture of the universe or united consciousness at large. It holds the purpose for your existing. It also holds the very powerful truth that choice is what got you here. Now, we have to understand that choice is more or less made consciously or more as a byproduct of determinism. But regardless of whether it's more out of determinism or more out of free will, a choice was made, and that's why you're here. Obviously, it's easy to see why this particular chakra is such an integral link to enlightenment. It's a bit like a relationship between a painter and the painting. This link is the link that has to be broken in order for somebody to die. Now, from the perspective of this chakra, every single death is a choice. I know that's pretty hard for you to relate to in your physical perspective. But what it means is that for death to occur, the frequency that is being held, including the choice, on behalf of one of your two perspectives, your physical perspective, must withdraw from physical. When people dissociate from their physical perspective, they do so through this gate, and they leave more or less of their own stream of energy going into the physical. Now, obviously, there's lots of shades of gray here relative to how much energy you leave going through this gate. A baby stuck in a crib, powerless, with none of its needs met, is often in enough pain that this withdrawal happens. This person is more committed to non-physical than physical, but is a coping mechanism. It has the energy of a person getting bitten in the water and choosing to get out and then hover at the shore, but the water is physical life, so they're no longer fully committed to physical life. The vast majority of spiritual teachers alive today, in fact, exist in this state and teach from this state. They teach from a state of dissociation from physicality. When someone has a near-death experience, they withdraw their energy back through this gate. They reconnect with the original intention they made for coming into this life. They may have experiences with all of this 
other side of the link, that which is non-physical. Based off of that, they recommit. They again make the conscious choice to come back through and commit into the physical. There are many understandable misconceptions that people have about this chakra. I mean, you can understand why people would think the things that they do, understanding some of the qualities of this chakra, shall we say. But here's one of the most common misconceptions. It's that spiritual people have more in alignment soul star chakras. In fact, the opposite is usually the case. It is usually not the case because they are often uncommitted to half of the equation of this link. They often view physical life as some kind of test they're being put through in order to transcend it, and that the goal is to disconnect from the illusion of physical life. In fact, someone who has no awareness of the non-physical and is totally physically committed to their physical life usually has a more in alignment soul chakra. Am I trying to say that the best way to bring this chakra into alignment is to go into a state of lack of awareness and to simply commit to the physical as if the non-physical doesn't exist? No, what I'm saying is relative to this particular chakra and what makes this particular chakra be in a state of alignment. It's about the choice to be physical. <laughs> this chakra does not store anything. It is not the seed of anything. It is a gate or a link between temporal and non-temporal. The goal of bringing the chakra into alignment is the opposite of what people commonly assume. It is not to remember past lives, or to access the Akashic, or to become omniscient, or to live as the higher self. It is to reconnect to the bigger picture, to integrate physical and non-physical, to restore your sense of unique life purpose, excellence, and direction, as well as your place in the greater universe, and to commit to your temporal life. Some of the primary things that cause this chakra to go out of alignment are as follows. When you're lost, when you're disconnected from your feelings, and so you have lost access to your compass to go in the direction of what feels naturally right to you, or good to you. Um, when you're especially disconnected to the degree that you feel numb. When you're dissociated. When you're filled with doubt. When you're not committed to your life here in the physical. I think that would be my number one, actually. Top answer for what pulls this vibration out of alignment. It's specifically when you're not committed to your life here. When you're holding yourself back instead of taking the risks that need to be taken. When you're letting other people make decisions for you and dictate your direction. When you're not living from a place of choice. When you're not living in alignment with your authenticity. When you've lost touch with the why you're in this incarnation relative to the bigger picture of the universe. When you use spirituality to exit life or exit physicality or exit reality. When you're trying to transcend instead to integrate when you're in a state of disconnection or subconscious disidentification, and when you are too selectively identified. Something that may be really interesting to note for you is that when this particular chakra goes out of alignment, it can create a lot of different ailments within the body, however. When you're dealing with ailments that are mysterious, meaning that they don't fit a clear diagnosis, especially terminal illness, that don't fit a clear diagnosis, the person is going downhill, and it is non-responsive to treatment. Usually what's happening is it's this one that's out of alignment. So all this being said, what should you do to activate and bring into alignment your soul star chakra, which would be better called your life purpose chakra? <laughs> one, accept that you are non-physical energy that is currently expressing itself physically. If it really helps you to think about it this way, you are currently a soul temporarily having a human body. But this does not mean your body or your physicality is an illusion. It doesn't mean it's a lie. It doesn't mean it's a prison. It is a part of you. It's your creation. And it's a very real part of you. What I mean by real is that people who are subscribing to the more 11th dimensional perspective see the physicality as an illusion. Right? They don't see it as real. I, this we got to stop this. What we have to start doing is to see that all of these different dimensions are in and of themselves realities. So what we're dealing with in the universe is conflicting realities. And how do we integrate them so that they are no longer opposing, <laughs> but that they're complementary? This is the attitude you've got to start to have towards your physical life. Okay, so basically... <laughs> You created your embodiment, and you did so for a very important reason. So why? Why is the question? And you don't need to necessarily have the immediate answer to that. 
you can't have a life technically or lose a life technically because you are life. This means you don't have a life so as to transcend it. Therefore, why did you, as life, choose to express in this way? Two, you gotta be authentic. Okay, why? Because the more awareness you start to have, the more you realize that your own individual free will is not at all in contradiction to universal destiny. They're in fact one and the same. It is not possible for you to walk in the direction of what makes you personally feel good. That's part of your authenticity. It's part of your personal truth. And not have it inevitably line you up with the original intention you set for why you came here in the first place. When you're in alignment with your joy and your talent and your inner calling, that is you being in alignment with your life purpose and how that life purpose fits into the bigger picture of the universe. So you begin to really see and own up to and follow your own innate truths. To learn more about this, watch my video titled How to Be Authentic. 3. Commit to life. Commit to incarnation. What commitment is, is to put your energy and your focus, therefore, into something. If you're not committed to your life, you're sitting on the fences. You haven't put your energy into life, so you can't even sit here and be upset that something amazing hasn't happened with it. To understand more about this, watch my videos titled How to Get Over the Fear of Commitment and Find Your Subconscious Core Life Commitment. Can you see how you haven't been committed to your life and your time here in this physical time-space reality? For example, one person might not be meditating because they're in a state of avoidance of meditating because to meditate is to really be committed to their life here. Another person? potentially meditates because they're not committed to life, because meditation is their method of escapism. The purpose inherent in the soul star chakra is to integrate non-physical with physical. Four, the colors that are associated with and that activate this particular chakra is white and silver. I notice that silver works better usually. However, any one of those two colors, you can wear these colors, but the thing that actually creates the most resonance, shall we say, within this chakra, is when you're imagining flooding your entire being with these colors. Five, this chakra is intensely influenced by meditation, especially meditations whose aim is to reestablish the bigger picture or objective perspective and deliberate disidentification exercises. It is also especially responsive to the energy of the Merkaba and the Star of David. Six, use herbs and essential oils. For your benefit, I've compiled a list of those that I notice in all people actually cause the greatest resonance within this particular chakra or that activate it and bring it into alignment the very best. The first is your own spirit plant. Now I know that for some of you, you don't understand what the hell I mean by that. And for those of you who feel that way, I made a whole video about it. It's titled Spirit Plant. <laughs> My top pick is Narrowly followed by salvia, roman chamomile, white angelica, witch hazel, white sage, bergamot, cypress, frankincense, hyssop, and the combination of sandalwood and cedarwood together. 7. Attune yourself to certain minerals, just like I've done with the herbs. I've also compiled a list of those that activate and to create alignment the very best in the soul star chakra. They are as follows. Silver, iron, phenocyte, ametrine, herderite, selenite, diamond, datalite, magnesite, lemurian crystal, danburite, celestite, charoite, golden obsidian, rhodonite, pyrite, pedalite, fossils, bogey stones, and nickel. Eight, do breath work and breathing exercises. The breath is an interesting thing because it too is like a link, just like the soul star chakra. It's a link between physical and non-physical. I have seen breath work do just as much to bring someone into the body as it does to bring someone out of the body. When people are not connected to their physical life here, which is a big primary concern for this chakra, they begin to breathe shallow. They start to breathe shallow because it's a subconscious rejection of life itself. 
this reason, one of the greatest tools you can use to reverse it is breathwork. Nine, stimulate yourself with sounds that strengthen this connection between the physical and non-physical aspects of you. And if sounds don't work the best for you, use silence. You can find specific frequencies that are specifically designed for this chakra, but the sounds that will work best will be different from person to person. For example, let's say that somebody's life purpose can be actualized through them becoming a salsa dancer. Salsa music will actually cause a greater activation and pull into greater alignment the soul star chakra for this person. Much more so than these frequencies specifically designed for the soul star chakra. Another person it might be Tibetan chanting music. Another person it might be the sound of a cat purring. I want you to play around with what noises cause you to have that feeling of yourself within the greater picture of the universe at large. The music which creates the zest for your physical life here. Any music that causes you to feel a sense of calling into your purpose in this life, or that sense of purpose, does incredible stuff for the chakra. 10. Do things that cause you to remember the bigger picture outside your physical day-to-day -day life. You know the feeling. It's tempting when you're really stuck and bogged down in your physical day-to-day -day life without that awareness to sort of you know, go about your day losing that bigger picture. When you're in certain scenarios that cause you to think about the life that's bigger than this little life and the life that's bigger than your car problems, it does amazing things for this chakra. But then, instead of using that as an escape, really integrate that awareness of the bigger picture with what you're doing in your day-to-day -day life. When somebody achieves enlightenment, <laughs> I got issues with that achievement of enlightenment thing in general, but for the sake of your understanding, when somebody achieves a state of enlightenment, what happens is almost nothing. <laughs> they go back to the same task they did before. They chop wood, they carry water, they do the dishes. In today's world, they drive the car to the car repair shop. What it is is that the perspective that they have when they are doing that changes the quality of the experience of doing that thing completely. 11. Do not use spirituality in any way, shape, or form as a method of dissociating from, escaping from, transcending, or avoiding your physical life. And yes, I mean anything associated with physical existence. Instead, see your life as an opportunity for your soul to canvas itself physically. Fall in love with the physical instead. You're being called by the soul star chakra to stretch and hold both the truths of the temporal and the truths of the non-temporal. By intentionally doing things that activate and stimulate your soul star chakra, you are going to be stepping closer into alignment with your unique purpose. That includes your unique purpose within the universe at large and the bigger picture. Doing so means that you will be the integration between non-temporal and temporal. And it also means that you will develop one hell of a zest for life. Have a good week.